January 28, 2008, the head of one of Britain's most elusive crime families arrives to be sentenced. Together, Olive, Sean, and George Greenhalgh had become the most successful forgers in history. As a family group, it was brilliant. Their fakes ranged across all types of art and were so spectacular that one was even shown to the queen. Using police interviews and unseen footage, this film enters the Greenhalgh home and for the first time tells the family's incredible story. They were living almost in a different period of time. It was all quite unusual. Remarkably, most of their fakes were made in their garden shed using tools they had bought from their local hardware store. Welcome to the strange world of the artful codgers, the most unlikely master criminals the world has ever seen. It's quite an incredible story. I, I, I doubt if I'll ever get to the bottom of it. It was here in a modest working class home on the outskirts of Bolton, England, that the Greenhalshes set off on a 17 year crime spree that would leave the art world reeling. Their first attempt to con the art world was back in the fall of 1990. They had faked a painting by a Scottish artist named Samuel Peplow that could have brought in as much as 50,000 pounds and taken it to one of London's top art dealers in Piccadilly. They arrived here 6 or 6.30 in the evening. Because it was late, I tried to persuade them to leave the painting and let me think about it. And of course, they won't do that. Were they giving you the hard sell, would you say? It's... It's not necessarily the hard sell, it's, it's the wind-up sell. You know, it's, well, if you, you don't have to buy it, it'll go to your rival. You know, it's, it's using everybody against you, and you're keen to have good pictures. I mean, it's always a, 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 a turn-on. You have to really throw a bucket of cold water over yourself before you do these deals. <clears throat> I decided to buy the picture. I thought, well, wow, this is a stonking pet player. They asked me 15,000 pounds for it. And I said, for whatever reason, I'll give you 20, because I thought it was too cheap. This was a result. They wanted 15 grand, they had 20,000 pounds for something knocked up in the back shed. When did you realize you'd been had? That night. Sometime, because I do wake up in the middle of the night or quite often, and I just thought, I don't think that picture's genuine. In the morning, Peter Nahum had the picture analyzed and discovered it was recently painted. It was supposed to date from the 1930s. So with that knowledge, I immediately telephoned the police, then rang the family, George, whose immediate reaction was that he was going to sue me. Well, I simply told him that it, he could sue me if he liked. And if, if he wanted to know where the evidence was, it was in the hands of the police. At the time, Scotland Yard had just two officers covering art fraud for the entire country. And Peplo was one of dozens of cases they were dealing with. I then received a phone call from a woman saying she was Mrs. Greenhalgh, um, asking what we were going to do about her picture, that uh, it was genuine, she wanted it back, and so on. Uh, and really, I think she was clearly trying to see whether she could expect a knock on the door from the police at any time. The police didn't pursue the family 
because they thought the painting was a one-off forgery. But 17 years later, the Greenhalshes would be exposed as master criminals who had fooled some of the world's top auction houses, art galleries, and museums. George, the 84-year-old father of the family, was the salesman behind the operation. The fakes he had sold were worth millions. You see, what I've done with all these things that are valuable, I've asked people who are in the know. He said there were thousands and thousands of dollars. His 83-year-old wife, Olive, helped obtain the documents that convinced the experts that the fakes were real. Police suspect they sold over 120 forgeries. Does your husband conduct any sort of art business, buying and selling of works of art? No. To your knowledge, he's never bought or sold any art, antiques or antiquities? Not to my knowledge. All of the fakes were made by their middle-aged son, Sean, a self-taught genius who never had a job and spent his whole life at home with his parents. To tell you the truth, I've been absolutely amazed that they fooled anybody because they didn't fool me. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? We wouldn't believe it from a council house, would you? I've known the family for, well, 40 odd years. Yeah. How would you describe them? Well, funny family. The neighbors know little about the Greenhalshes, although the family has lived in the same house since the community was built in the 1950s. George was a custodian at the local technical college. Olive worked in a diaper factory. Yeah, they just seem really respectable. Um, you know, just going about their own business day to day. And you just wouldn't think at all that they were capable of doing it. Yes, they were like ghosts within the community, let's put it that way. That they, uh, yes, they flitted in and out. You saw them here, you saw them there, and then they just disappear and get back into their own world. Having avoided arrest, the Greenhalshes got busy planning more forgeries. They had learned from their mistake, and the next piece would be so convincing that it would end up on display in the country's greatest museum.